Hey, Friendly Neighborhood Immunologist here. And as of today, 110 million Americans have received one form of the COVID vaccine. And what that's meant is that COVID cases have dropped dramatically. Back in January, you could just take a look. There was about 280,000 cases per day, and now we've dipped below 60,000. And that's fantastic progress. But because so many people have been vaccinated, you're starting to see rare symptoms, potentially side effects, that's really unknown at this point. But one of them is thrombocytopenia, which is basically when your body can't stop bleeding. So I'm going to tell you what thrombocytopenia is, how your body normally stops bleeding, and then signs and symptoms to look out for. So it is incredibly rare, but I still think it's important to understand how it works. So let's get to understand thrombocytopenia you need to know how platelets work in your body normally. So I'm gonna draw platelets in this purple color and I want you to notice that we're in a blood vessel and inside of your blood vessels are red blood cells and they are floating along down your bloodstream, but they're not alone. They actually have hundreds of different things with them, including these purple platelets. All right, so hopefully you've noticed a color coding system here. This purple is the exact same color purple as this giant interesting cell over here. Now this giant interesting cell is called a mega karyocyte. And it really is mega because it is the largest immune cell in your entire body. So this cell right here is hanging out in your bone marrow. It actually never leaves your bone marrow. And you might have noticed these long, interesting spindles. And it might make it look a little bit like a person who's played with silly putty and stretched it out. Or if you were a D&D &D nerd like me, it might look a little bit like a beholder. But either way, you're right in noticing these long spindles. They can literally just turn into this branch and break off. So megakaryocytes are giant cells that make thousands upon thousands of platelets for you every day. And they can leave the bone marrow and enter your bloodstream. And when they do this, they last about seven to 10. <laughs> I almost said business days. They last seven to 10 days for you. And they're replaced continually by megakaryocytes in your bone marrow. Now, it's hard to imagine just how many platelets you have in your body, so I'm gonna try and give you a visual here. All right, um, you might have a syringe at home if you have a child that needs medication, um, perhaps a pet, but either way, I have for you here a one milliliter syringe, and I'm gonna pull it back just to kind of give you a visual on what one mil really is. Boom, that's it. So one mil, let's say we took this much of your blood and we counted every platelet you had, you would be counting to 150 million. That's how many platelets you should have in here. So your blood is really, really densely packed with platelets. All right, now you know where platelets come from and how they, long they last. And I need to introduce to you two friends here. There are two protein friends in the blood that are absolutely required to make sure that you don't bleed to death. So the main goal of platelets is to stop you from bleeding, but it needs help. So in blue here, this protein is called prothrombin. And the other protein you need to meet is more like a fiber. And this is called fibrinogen, great name. Okay, so now the stage is set, and I need to show you what's gonna happen if perhaps, let's say you went for your first run during the pandemic, and you tripped, and you fell, and you have basically cut your skin, you've cut your blood vessel, and now there's nothing, there's nothing holding those red blood cells in. So red blood cells could start to leak out of your skin. And um, if you cut your skin as well as your blood vessel, 
the blood is actually going to leak all the way out and you would see the blood coming out of your knee. If for some reason you only cut the blood vessel and you did not actually um, cut your skin, it would turn into a bruise. So a bruise is actually trapped red blood cells underneath your skin. And they turn that dark color because they're sort of like oxidizing. Okay, but what happens is platelets to the rescue this open space is rapidly filled with these platelets and it's called a platelet plug. And they really do just block the area of the blood vessel that's been opened. And now you might think, okay, fantastic, job done. Job's not done. The platelet plug is extremely helpful to stop you from bleeding to death, but it's actually not very stable. So if you just waited, you know, basically a minute, got up and started running again, you'd begin to bleed. And that's because the platelet plug was stopping the blood from leaving, but it's not really stable. It needs some stabilizing factors. And so here's how that works. Basically, you might be familiar with the fact that your skin is rich in collagen, but believe it or not, so are your blood vessels. So who knows, maybe Halle Berry is right and we should all be drinking collagen-rich bone broth for beautiful skin and beautiful blood vessels. But either way, prothrombin, needs to detect collagen. So collagen is released. And that is going to activate prothrombin. And then prothrombin is going to turn into a diamond shape just for effect here. That's gonna show you that it's activated. Let me draw you another little diamond here. Prothrombin has turned into, you might have guessed it, thrombin. Now thrombin can do something neat and act upon fibrinogen. So fibrinogen are these longer fibers, but they really need to be cut into smaller fibers known as fibrin. Now fibrin can go support the platelet plug right here. So when all of these fibrin strands come together, they're going to form a mesh net. Now your platelet plug has something to grab hold of. Now it has stability. You could get up from your run and continue. And this would basically form a scab and then over the course of a couple of weeks could replace both your skin and blood vessel cells. So you're set. All right. So that is how this whole process works normally. Um, interesting historical fact. This is actually how Rasputin came to power. You may not have been expecting that. Uh, so Prince Alexei, um, a Russian prince, actually had hemophilia, a blood disorder. And what happened there is very relevant to what we've just talked about. Um, so the prince, when he got an injury, he had platelets, so he could form a platelet plug, but he was lacking some of the factors that turn prothrombin into thrombin. So without thrombin cutting fibrinogen into fibrin, there was no mesh net to support his platelet plug. And so if he ever got up, ran around, he would just start bleeding again. So it's thought that Rasputin, um, with his calming manner and hypnotism, actually convinced the prince to lay still for a long enough period of time for even somebody with hemophilia to eventually convert prothrombin into thrombin, fibrinogen into fibrin, and then form the mesh net. So simply the act of hypnosis and waiting that allowed uh, Rasputin to heal the prince. So now that you're aware of the process, what platelets do for you, how they work with prothrombin and fibrinogen, uh, we need to talk about, <clears throat> we need to talk about why somebody would have thrombocytopenia. So why would anybody have less platelets? About 6.3% of the population have thrombo, cytopenia. All right, 6.3% of the population. Now, some of this is short-term. So if it's short-term, 
It could be due to a drug. Um, if some people take the drug rifampicin, occasionally they'll experience short-term thrombocytopenia. Short-term could also be viruses. If you know anyone who's ever had mono, so the Epstein-Barr virus, that can actually temporarily cause thrombocytopenia. But there are long-term causes. Now these are more serious. Some people genetically make less platelets. So if those people genetically have less platelets over here, let's say they're missing, you know, at least half of their platelets, it's gonna take that much longer to form the platelet plug. So those people will bleed for longer than the average person. Another thing could possibly be the immune system gone awry. This is very serious. Um, hopefully you've watched a few other videos and or you're familiar with B cells. If not, I encourage you to look them up. B cells are part of your immune system that are long lived and they have memory. But most importantly, they make these little Y shaped proteins called antibodies. And antibodies bind to their targets. Normally they're binding to a virus. If they're not binding to a virus, they could be binding to a toxin, to a bacteria. That's their job. Um, part of the goal of vaccination is to activate B cells against the target of interest. Um, yes, and so typically I draw them in blue for you. So here we are. And these B cell antibodies, instead of being for something helpful like the COVID virus, they are for platelets. So now your poor platelets are stuck. They're stuck on these antibodies. And when they're bound up in antibodies, they can't clump together and form a plug for you. So either genetically or by your immune system, you can lack platelets and that can cause uh, bleeding, bleeding of the gums and excessive bruising. So what can be done? All right, so what can you do? Basically, let your doctor know ahead of time if anyone in your family has a history of low platelets or any type of blood disorder. And then secondarily, after the vaccine, keep an eye out for bleeding, particularly bleeding from the gums and or unexplained bruising. And those types of things can save lives. So after um, Dr. Gregory Michael died, um, just an amazing OBGYN from Florida, people began to pay attention to thrombocytopenia and it has saved lives. Um, a woman named Mrs. Legaspi, um, her daughter noticed the bruising on her arms after the vaccination, about 72 hours after, and she brought her mom to the ER right away, and she was treated for her low platelets, and now she's well. So hopefully I'm here to empower you with knowledge so that you can uh, live a healthy life. So yeah, I'll see you next time.